Today on Around Kansas, we honor Jim Ryan for being awarded the Congressional Medal of Freedom. Then Dave Kendall is back talking about immigrants along the Santa Fe Trail. On the front porch, Clint Armstrong joins us. Ron Wilson has a fun poem about being patient when you breed your mare. And we end with a look at some places in Kansas and how they got their names. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. You can always email me at Corey at SureCropFertilizers.com and with any questions you have, and we'd be glad to answer it and work with you. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Deb Goodrich and welcome to Around Kansas. Just a couple of weeks ago, former Congressman Jim Ryan was awarded the Congressional Medal of Freedom. Gosh, is that right? Did I get that right? I can't think of a nicer man to receive that award. And of course, to many of us, we recall uh, Jim Ryan's making the headlines when he was, I believe, the first high school student to run the mile in under four minutes. And of course, a uh, an Olympic athlete and just an all-around very nice guy, and he went on to become a congressman. And I uh, had the pleasure of meeting Congressman Ryan on a couple of occasions, and I just can't think of anyone nicer. Whether you agree with politics or not, Jim Ryan is a super, super nice man and an incredible athlete. And when he was reflecting on this honor, he commented that there was a prayer that he used to say when he was in junior high. And basically it was, you know, Lord, my resume doesn't amount to much, but I feel like you've got a plan for my life. Could you make me just the best at one thing? And then, of course, he became the best middle distance runner at the time in the entire world. That's, that's pretty special. So we would like to extend our congratulations to Kansan Jim Ryan. Now, I know that uh, there are a lot of things going on in the world, and there's a lot of things not happening in the world, but, you know, keep us in mind with what you're up to. Um, we did a segment maybe last week or a couple of weeks ago about my hometown of Oakley and how if you're going to go exploring in western Kansas, you need to make Oakley uh, your stopping over place. And I want to add something to that. If you're going to Little Jerusalem and Monument Rocks, especially the Keystone Gallery, which is right on Highway 83, just south of Oakley and uh, real near the road that takes you out to Monument Rocks, there, Barb Shelton and Chuck Bonner have an incredible amount of knowledge. They've got a wonderful display and they've got a wonderful gift shop. So stop in and they can tell you about all the things that you're going to see or they can tell you about the things that you just saw when you went to look at these incredible rock formations. They can show you some of the fossils that they've discovered. Chuck's family's been in the fossil hunting business for a long, long time and they're just super nice people. Masks are required. So when you go to the um, Keystone, make sure and, and have your mask with you. And... Uh, stay safe and go exploring and just enjoy all Kansas has to offer. And there are so many places in Kansas I've thought about doing. What do you think of this title for a book? The Stones and Bones Tour of Kansas. 
because there's so many, of course, you know, I love cemeteries. So there's so many cool stones out there that are natural. And then there's a lot that are, have been carved like in cemeteries or statuary. And I really love those. So I've been kind of twirling that one around in my head, the stones and bones tour. And then when everything allows us, when the situation allows, we'll actually do those tours. Wouldn't that be fun? Would you sign up? In 1821, a trade route was opened from Missouri in the United States across prairies and mountains to Mexico. In 2021, we will mark 200 years of epic conflicts and grand adventures, larger than life personalities and sweeping landscapes. Join us on an historic journey. The Santa Fe Trail lives on. Find us on social media or santafetrail.org. Okay, looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum, you're gonna find some really interesting stuff like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. We've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. We've got the Ray Pump Organ Collection. We're a little bit place with a great big story and we'd love to have you. Highways 40, 83, and I-70 come together right here in Oakley. Roads that lead to businesses, to magnificent rock formations, to scenic vistas, to places where legends were made. Roads that lead us home. Discover Oakley, the gateway to western Kansas. This segment brought to you by the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center in Oakley. Dave Kendall has been doing an amazing job bringing to life different aspects of the Santa Fe Trail. And I love this next one because as Dave's guest discusses, the Santa Fe Trail was two ways. There was traffic going out to Santa Fe, traffic coming back from Santa Fe. A real important piece of the story. Thank you to Dave and Prairie Hollow Productions for sharing this magnificent series. My family originated in Spain and came to New Mexico in the 1700s. So, uh, my roots are much in the Hispanic uh, area of what at one time was the far reaches of the Spanish Empire. In the early part of my family history, they were very much involved with trade in some way or another on the Santa Fe Trail. Currently a resident of Lenexa, Kansas, Gene Chavez brings history to light through his roles as a teacher, mentor, and public speaker. We spoke with him, not far from his home, on the grounds of the Mahaffey Farmstead, an historic stagecoach stop on the Santa Fe Trail. We asked him about the misconceptions he encounters about the trail. Most of the misconceptions about the Santa Fe Trail is that it was a one-way route taking goods from the United States by American entrepreneurs. And it really uh, wasn't that, it was a two-way thoroughfare. And without uh, the entrepreneurs on the Mexican side, it wouldn't have happened. Uh, the people of New Mexico had been trading all up and down El Camino Real, uh, which was the trade route from Mexico City up to Santa Fe, and then uh, through the state of Chihuahua, uh, and then uh, trade all the way to the West Coast with the California settlements of, of Spain. So. Uh, their contacts for trading on the Mexican side were, were enormous. And, and so uh, being able to trade with such a market uh, really made the westward expansion of the United States possible. And I think most people just don't understand that. 
He also thinks it's important to understand that many of the merchants who engaged in the trade were of Hispanic descent. I think that uh, we're at a very opportune time in our history to tell the counter narrative of many stories uh, that we kind of take as gospel. I think it's important that we tell both sides of the story. And as the uh, bicentennial of the Santa Fe Trail comes up in 2021, I think it's important that people understand that, uh, hey, there were two sides of the trail. Uh, without the markets on the other end of the trail, entrepreneurs uh, sending goods. And by the way, most of those people, entrepreneurs would buy the goods, were of Hispanic origin, and they would buy the goods and then hire companies to transfer that into their territory. So really the majority of traders were uh, of Hispanic origin, not of Anglo or other Western European origin. So I think it's important for people to know that counter narrative. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. Highways 40, 83, and I-70 come together right here in Oakley. Roads that lead to businesses, to magnificent rock formations, to scenic vistas, to places where legends were made. Roads that lead us home. Discover Oakley, the gateway to western Kansas. This segment brought to you by Bob Schwartz Financial. Values, commitment, transparency. Clint Armstrong, co-founder and brewmaster at 1524 Brew House in Clay Center, is our guest today. We talked in the brew room and Clint explained how 1524 became a reality. I want to talk about where the vision started, how you decided on this area, all that sure. went into this because I mean sure. it's it's a massive project. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's kind of fun too because we have, you know, there's three different stories really. There's, you know, Scott Patterson's story and then Ken Hughes' story and then kind of my story. And so, um, yeah, trying to figure out what, what I wanted to do, and I definitely wanted to open up a brewery, and Sarah and I had kind of just, you know, we said, let's do it. Let's find a way to make it happen. And so we just started looking at buildings and just looking at, you know, a few of the little places for sale. And then, but for me, I always wanted to be downtown. So, you know, just trying to kind of figure out what we could do downtown. And, um, you know, if you remember, they had the big barbecue sign out front here, and there was a, just a sign, and it just said, you know, for rent with a number. And I don't even think there was a name, and so I had never really met Scott, or to my knowledge, I mean, we had been into the pharmacy or whatever, but it's not like I knew him by name by any means. And everybody I talked to around town, you know, they knew that I brewed beer, they knew that I wanted to do something in town, and they just, you know, they kept telling me, and it was like repeating, like, why don't you call Scott, or why don't you call this number, or blah, 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 call that Brady's barbecue restaurant or whatever and I kept hearing Scott's name and just this building and of course I would drive by it more times you know just to drive by and just kind of like daydream if you will and so finally you know you 
after God gives you so many clues and so many like, hey, push forwards and you got to, you know, take the jump and do it. And I called, called Scott up and I just asked him, you know, how much the rent was and blah, 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 and just trying to let him know what I was planning on doing. Then he called back and he's like, well, you know, what are you looking to do? And I was like, well, and I told my background of being a brewer and then I wanted to open up a little tap room. And that's all I, you know, I was getting a loan to basically just open up a little tap room, you know, maybe have cold cuts and then see if we could develop into a restaurant one day. And that was kind of the thought process because I had no workforce. I mean, it was going to be me and hopefully, you know, a sign on the window would bring in a couple of people from time to time. So I would have some help, you know. Um, so he's like, well, what about a partner? And I was like, well, you know, what are you talking about? And he, and so we all just started getting together and kind of getting to know each other. And then I met Ken, who'd been doing some home brewing. And then, you know, Scott just was e eager to do it and um, was down to make it happen. And so we just said, okay, let's let's go. And so then we started, had to work out a name, and that was just where, where it started. And so uh, we came up with a name and kind of a time frame on when everybody was going to kind of stop their day jobs, or, or Ken and I anyway, and, and just go full time here and start making it happen. And it just started going. And that's now, let's give everybody what was the time frame on from actually making that phone call to okay. everybody saying, okay, we're. we're it was probably about three months, I would say. that, And there was, you know, the first phone call and then several meetings, and then uh, the meeting where we all just said, let's do it. We're, we're in. Um, probably about three months. So. And so then what was the first step to after the, the paperwork was done and you were headed here? The first step, we wanted to make sure that we had a kitchen manager and we had one and then and that fuzzled out really quick. And so we were like, OK, so let's just start building and figuring out what we want to do. And so the first step was really to come into the building and see, you know, what do we have? What can we do? What can we pull off and where can we do it? And just kind of figure out the logistics of where everything's going to go and what we might need. I'm Bob Swartz, and I've devoted the last 43 years to helping Kansans reach their retirement goals and to protect the family farm. At Bob Swartz Financial, we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always dreamed of. Our team of professionals can help you create an efficient strategy using a variety of investment vehicles to help you address your financial needs and your concerns. Bob Swartz Financial values, commitment, and transparency. The Kansas Sweet Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need, and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. This segment brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Let us help feed your family. Patience is not my strong suit, as my wife can attest. We want everything right now. But Mother Nature reminds us that some things just have to take their course, and one of those is a horse's gestation. So when we breed a mare, we get excited, but we have to wait a long, long time. This poem is entitled, Expecting. We live in a society of instant gratification. 
Only things I can have right now will satisfy my expectation. We want instant results. Patience is a thing of the past. We just go to the drive through because we want our food so fast. But some things just can't be rushed, as a rancher comes to learn. Nature has its own independent schedule with everything in turn. One of those processes which must simply run its course is the 11 month period known as gestation of the horse. There's no way to push fast forward or hit the gas for acceleration to hurry along a mare's full period of gestation. So I know I must be patient to reach my long-term goal as I await the third trimester and the birth of that foal. We'll feed the mare some extra grain and get her used to the stall while we have the full kit ready to respond to nature's call. And I'll express a hope while counting the days somehow God grant me patience and let me have it right now. Happy trails. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. At Farm Credit, we partner with America's farmers who work hard each and every day to grow the food that we all enjoy. It's not an easy task, but it's an important one. Farm Credit is proud to work with farmers and ranchers, lending support in rural America. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Kansas has some very interesting place names. Topeka. Nobody else has the capital city named Topeka. So Michelle decided to investigate a few of those and share some of the more interesting place names in our fair state. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Deb. When I moved to Kansas, I was immediately intrigued by some of the interesting and unusual names of Kansas towns. Today, Let's explore interesting Kansas place names. In my travels along the highways, byways, and back roads of Kansas, I always notice interesting place names and ask myself, how did this town get its name? While traveling to and from Lane, Kansas, I passed through the town of Rantoul. Located in Franklin County, the town was founded in 1862 and was named for Massachusetts Senator Robert Rantoul, Jr. The town, like so many in Kansas, relied on the railroad for its livelihood along with agriculture. Founded in 1879, Jetmore was originally called Buckner due to its location near Buckner Creek. When Buckner wished to be designated the county seat for Hodgman County, Topeka lawyer Colonel Abraham Buckles Jetmore represented the town in its legal battle. When Jetmore helped bring the railroad to the town and secured its position as the county seat, the grateful residents named the town in his honor. Located in Comanche County, Protection was founded in 1884. The town gained its interesting name from local political support for protective tariffs during the 1884 presidential election. In 1957, Protection gained international fame when the National Polio Foundation selected the town as a site to administer the Salk polio vaccine, and the town was 100% protected from the dreaded disease. After the Civil War, many former soldiers came to Kansas looking for a fresh start. Levi and Dan Yaki left their home in Delphos, Ohio, and settled in Ottawa County, and Delphos, Kansas was born. Delphos's main claim to fame arrived after the Civil War when Grace Bedell, also known as Lincoln's little correspondent, settled in the town with her husband, himself a Union veteran. It was Grace who wrote to the then-candidate Abraham Lincoln and implored him to grow some chin whiskers. Located in Barber County, the town of Medicine Lodge gained its name from a sacred Kiowa ceremony that took place near the confluence of Elm Creek and the Medicine Lodge River in 1866. As a part of their ceremonial cycles, the Kiowa constructed an arbor known as a medicine lodge that summer. 
After the 1867 Medicine Lodge peace treaty negotiations with various Southern Plains nations, the name Medicine Lodge stuck. The town itself was founded in 1873. The community was the home of the one and only Cary Nation, and today the history of the peace treaty negotiations draws thousands of people to the town every fall. I hope you enjoyed today's look at Kansas place names and that you'll join me next time for another historical adventure somewhere around Kansas. Thank you so much for sharing Wednesday mornings with me. Stay in touch, and in the meantime, I'll see you somewhere around Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. ValleyVet.com is your one-stop shop for your every animal need. From prescription meds, vaccines, equipment, and more for the ranch to the show ring, shop ValleyVet.com for fast shipping and great prices. ValleyVet Supply. Okay, looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum, you're going to find some really interesting stuff like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. We've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. We've got the Ray Pump Organ Collection. We're a little bit place with a great big story and we'd love to have you. In 1821, a trade route was opened from Missouri in the United States across prairies and mountains to Mexico. In 2021, we will mark 200 years of epic conflicts and grand adventures, larger-than-life personalities and sweeping landscapes. Join us on an historic journey. The Santa Fe Trail lives on. Find us on social media or santafetrail.org. When your college career begins, you'll have the opportunity to build upon your skills. One of those opportunities could be joining a Collegiate Farm Bureau chapter. With programs at 19, 2, and 4-year schools around the state, you can't go far without the possibility of joining a chapter. Collegiate Farm Bureau provides opportunities to build your network with other students, connect to leaders and mentors, develop a greater understanding of ag in Kansas and around the United States, share your knowledge with kids, consumers, and elected officials, experience statewide events and conferences, compete in contests to build essential skills and win great prizes, and gain eligibility for scholarships. It helps you understand Farm Bureau a little bit more. So I got to be involved on the county, collegiate, district, and state levels. And my favorite part from the program is being involved in the leadership aspect of it and just gaining skills that I wouldn't have otherwise. Want to learn more? Visit www.kfb.org slash collegiate. Watch AgAM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.